Okay. Well, going okay, good evening. Uh, again, welcome to our, our training session. Uh, I'm Bob Arnone with Get It Right and doing this in conjunction with the North Alabama Football Officials Association. Uh, so as you come on, uh, put your name and state in the chat room, especially if you're a rookie, uh, let us know what your email is so we can find a place for you. Uh, you know, uh, we're recording this session, uh, so we'll be able to uh, follow up on it later on for those that uh, haven't that didn't have a chance to join us live. So our goal is that we want to provide a forum for some discussions. I uh, especially want to engage new officials. Uh, this kind of helps with recruiting. I uh, build everybody's confidence that uh, yeah, as, you're, as you're thinking about becoming an official, uh, this is what you're facing. Uh, but you have a lot of folks here that can help you out. I uh, need to start training now. Actually, need to start training a couple couple weeks ago, but the sooner the better. Uh, spring scrimmages are happening now, so uh, it's a great opportunity to participate in those. Uh, so thank you all for joining. Okay, uh, this will last about 30 minutes. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about defenseless players, and anything and everything we talk about is really based on Federation rules. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, it's a short number of people here tonight. So uh, if you got a question, just go ahead and chime in. Uh, otherwise, put something in comments. And then uh, when we get to the end of each segment here, we'll see what the comments are and uh, uh, have a discussion about it. Uh, when we're done talking about defenseless players, uh, then we'll go into inadvertent whistles. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing. Oh, no, we'll start here with this one. So uh, when you get the rule book, uh, one of the first rules that you want to really get into is rule two. Uh, those are definitions. Uh, that's important to understand in order to uh, put all the other rules in the context. Uh, no matter what rule you're dealing with, I guarantee you that it's going to trace back to one of the rules that are in rule two. So just kind of joking around with all the people trying to get confused with identity. Uh, rule 2-32 took care of that. Uh, those are the player designations. Articles 1 to 15 takes care of a whole bunch of uh, situations, different players, uh, positions, captains, substitutes, and, and the like. Article 16 defines a defenseless player. And, and what we're looking for there is to uh, uh, enhance safety uh, on the field. That uh, uh, football is by design a, a very physical game. Uh, and, and with that, we want to make sure that uh, the physicality is happening when and where it needs to. But uh, what we run into sometimes is a player that is focused on what he's trying to accomplish. Uh, maybe he's physically positioned in a certain way that makes him more vulnerable to injury. And anybody who contacts a defenseless player, uh, uh, it has to be legal. Uh, so that means it's not targeting. Uh, sometimes when you watch TV uh, for the college and pro games, they will combine targeting and defenseless player. Uh, those two are separate. Uh, you could have targeting against a defenseless player, but uh, a hard hit against a defenseless player is a foul. Uh, so just because uh, it wasn't targeting doesn't mean that we don't have an issue there. And, and we'll show some of those uh, scenarios. Uh, but no matter what, just like uh, any other rule dealing with safety, when in doubt, in this case, the player is defenseless. Uh, so you can hit a defenseless player. It needs to be legal contact. Uh, but then we get down into Rule 9, 9-4, uh, talking about illegal personal contact. Uh, Article 3G 
uh, explicitly calls out the fences player. Uh, so we don't want to have any unnecessary or excessive contact, which incites rough, roughness. So that's when we introduce the defenses player into the illegal personal conduct rule there. So I'm going to stop sharing here for a moment, and we're going to drop into the uh, Get It Right program. Okay, so we start off here at defenses players, and uh, these are the ones that uh, that they get addressed. The, the first is a passer. So defenses player again is one because of physical positioning and focused concentration, may be especially vulnerable to injury, and contact with a defenses player is the responsible for making legal contact. Uh, you need to know what the definition of a passer is. Uh, a, a legal forward pass, 751, and that uh, passer continues to be defenseless until the pass ends. Again, that's been rule two, uh, 231. Um, watch out for that passer. What this scenario is gonna show is actually a, a backward pass to this slot receiver. And part of the reason that we want to include that in here is we're talking about contact against the passer. So it's not just the quarterback. It could be any player that's passing the ball. So he's not released the ball yet. Uh, White 55 is not leading with the helmet, so it should be a, a legal contact there. So now the pass is thrown, so he's now considered defenseless. So that contact by that white player uh, is, is excessive in that regard. Uh, what could he have done differently? Uh, he could have just come up and pushed him. Uh, but because that player was exposed, uh, we, we have an issue there. So we'll go down here, you know, put it in the playthrough mode. Kind of circle it around here. So this is how it may look when you're when you're down on the field. So again, something like that was not necessary. It was, even though it was legal contact, in this case, because it was unnecessarily uh, forceful, uh, we have a 15 yard penalty right there. Now we get into receivers. Uh, what we need to do with receivers is uh, the defenseless one the, in the process of catching the ball. So the, they're focusing on that, uh, making sure they make that catch. But then once they establish themselves and become a runner, then they can they can be hit, but in this case, uh, that receiver was focused on catching the ball, has not yet become a runner. It's unnecessary excessive contact, and then we got that problem right there. Uh, so with the two new officials that uh, we have on the on the call tonight, uh, you may have heard on uh, college and NFL that somebody needs to make a football move. Uh, we do not have that terminology in high school. So I, I, you might have that in your mind as you're trying to determine if we have a problem there, uh, but, but certainly don't uh, say those words out loud uh, because it really doesn't apply. Uh, you know, the, the, the receiver in this situation needs to establish himself as a runner. Uh, if he hasn't had a chance to do that yet, then uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to go ahead and call that uh, as illegal contact against a defenseless player. And again, when in doubt, he's defenseless. 
Okay, I'm going to back up into this and we'll do a comparison. And on the right side, same thing. He's paying attention, trying to catch the ball. But then the, uh, the tackler, the defensive player, wrapped his arms around him and took him to the ground. So there you make the assessment that uh, it was not forcible contact. It wasn't one of those blow up kind of hits. Uh, so therefore, we're going to rule that as a, as a legal contact right there. Uh, again, the defense has the right to tackle the player. Now we just need to make sure that everything was legal and we're keeping everybody safe. Here we're going to see that uh, receiver again. He's going to come out. He's focused on catching the ball. He's got the ball, has not yet established himself as a runner. Now he has. So now he's no longer considered defenseless. So as long as that's a legal contact, uh, which it is, uh, we just have uh, a good tackle and the runner is down right there at about the you know, 32 yard line or so. We're gonna go up here for an interception. So what happens here is uh, the ball's gonna be intercepted. The player that was originally going to be the one to receive the ball is turning around to see what's going on. And you can see you got somebody barreling down on him then. So there's no way that this blue player could see the white player coming up and leveling him out like that. So th there's a lot of things that are happening on the field. Uh, of course, we're gonna be looking to see what the status of the ball is, uh, but we need to kind of keep the corners of our eye open. And of course we have other members on the field that are responsible for watching everybody else on the field to keep our eyes open for an illegal hit like that. Uh, for the new officials, uh, you're going to hear terms like covering official. So that at a certain point here, this may be a, a back judge that's watching for this play, and one of the wing officials would be watching to see what's happening all around them. Uh, the back judge could catch this play as well. Uh, from the center of the field, he should have a pretty good view of what's going on there. So this is generally where the back judge would be. So yeah, that uh, they, they, that would certainly be a back judge call in this case. Forward progress, this is gonna be a tricky one uh, because a lot of players, a lot of the running backs uh, are skilled enough to, to break a tackle. Uh, so we have to kind of gauge how well the, the team is playing. Uh, but still, if that runner is being held up uh, and we think that that play is over, uh, we need to, to kill that play right there. We can't hold up a player like that and have something like that happen. Have a second person come in for what some of us might call a kill shot. Uh, we have a defenseless player right there that's been held up. Uh, we, we can't have that unnecessarily hit, that unnecessary hit happen. Uh, so that's certainly a penalty, half the distance to the goal. And you're going to find that a lot of these two, if we think that uh, those are flagrant, uh, that, that could set the situation where that player could be ejected. So that's something that we have to pay attention to as well. So when somebody is going to receive a, a kick, that's another opportunity for a defenseless player. Used to be that there was a halo rule. We don't have anything like that in, in high school. In fact, we never did have one in high school. Uh, so his focus, the blue player is focused on catching the ball, but then we got a member of the kicking team that wants to go up there and make a point. So, uh, same kind of situation there. 
Uh, there's no fair catch involved. He doesn't have to make a fair catch signal. Uh, he's just a defensive player waiting to catch that ball. Uh, so we got to give him that opportunity to do that. Uh, the kicking team could be standing right there ready for him, or he can come up and push him. Uh, he, there, there's other ways to get him to the ground, but uh, having a kill shot like that is not what we want to have in the game. Similar thing on this punt. Again, there's no fair catch signal involved. He's there trying to catch the ball, and yet the guy wants to level him. Uh, again, unnecessary. Uh, we don't need that in the game. Okay, when we get into forward progress, uh, our rule in high school is a little bit different than what we might run into in college in the NFL. Uh, the player's not down until that knee hits the ground, but the player becomes defenseless when he gives himself up. So we need to let him go. Uh, and then of course, once that knee hits the ground or any part of his body other than the hands or feet hits the ground, uh, the, the ball is dead. Uh, if somebody wants to come up and, and push that player down to kind of get him to the ground quicker or sooner or something like that, that's fine. Uh, but what we don't want to have is anything like this on the right when he's giving himself up and then this guy's going in for the kill shot. So that's unnecessary there. Uh, there's been some debate about, well, how much reaction time does the defensive guy need to have? You know, it's up on the defensive player. If he sees that that guy's giving himself up, try to back off or redirect his contact. Uh, it's not easy, but we want to keep the player safe. And then, of course, there's going to be opportunities when you've got the uh, a play happening on the opposite side of the field, or it's obvious that a player is taking himself out of the out of the play. In this case, this is a quarterback. Uh, he's already thrown the ball. It's downfield. Uh, actually, in this scenario, the ball has actually been intercepted. Uh, so he's just kind of walking to see what's going on, and then we get something like this. Uh, now, this is obvious targeting. Uh, leading with the head, going up into the head neck area. Uh, so we have not only a defensive player, but also targeting and also flagrant. So there's enough happening right here that white 90 uh, should be ejected from the game. And then finally on the defensive player, uh, blindside block. This has been a point of emphasis for the past couple of years. Uh, and what we have happening here is you got number three coming up uh, as a member of the kicking team. Over here, uh, the receiving team's already caught the ball. He's running to the opposite side of the field. Number seven on the receiving team, you know, he has a, a right to keep blue number three from getting over there. But the way that the rules are written is it's better if you can make contact with open hands. And that's what's happening right here. So this is legal contact by number seven. Uh, number three probably didn't see it coming, but number number seven is pushing him on the shoulders. It's not a block in the back. Uh, so that's legal contact right there. So it kind of shows that there are other alternatives to getting a player on the ground uh, than just doing any kind of a kill shot which is what we're going to have here on the comparison. That normal circumstance is there, that there's nothing wrong with that contact there on the right. It's shoulder to shoulder. Number seven's not leading with this helmet, but because number three didn't see it coming, the play is going in the opposite direction. It's more force than what was necessary uh, to get number three down on the ground. So that's uh, an example of the blind side block. So those are your defenseless players.
do we have any questions on any of that? All right. Okay. Now we'll get into inadvertent whistles. Uh, it doesn't look like we have anybody else that joined us. Uh, so we'll just continue on from here. Okay. Rule four uh, is where you find when the ball becomes dead. In fact, rule 4-2-2 is almost two pages in the rule book and it lists all those circumstances of when the ball becomes dead uh, and the down has ended. So as an official, uh, you're gonna know what, what those are. Uh, they're, they're pretty obvious if you know anything about the game. Uh, but there's some circumstances in there that you might not have been aware of, things like a simultaneous catch uh, and the like. Uh, that are kind of special uh, situations that you see, not often, but often enough that you need to be aware of. So be patient. Uh, most players these days pretty much know when, when the play is over. Um, uh, so you're going to see them back off. You're going to see them slow down. Uh, most coaches, especially at the varsity level, have gotten away from this thing about play until the whistle. Uh, that's never been a, a wise idea. Uh, the ball is dead when the ball is dead, not when we blow the whistle. So uh, uh, make sure you know where the ball is. And, and we say that because that's what happens then when you – Blow the whistle and everybody stops, but the ball was never dead. And, and that's where the, the problem comes in. So that's when that inadvertent whistle uh, ends the down. So what do we do when we wound up killing the play that should have been killed? So we're going to start off with uh, the, the first situation is uh, you have a forward pass, a legal forward pass, uh, or a snap that's in flight or during a legal kick, a punt, kickoff, whatever. Uh, if you wind up blowing the whistle while that ball's in the air, uh, we're just gonna kill it and we're gonna go back, we're gonna replay the down. Uh, no decisions necessary. Uh, we're gonna go back to where that ball was and we're gonna do a do-over. Now, if, it, you know, if the ball's snapped uh, or you know kicked, uh, now we're getting into a situation here of uh, a loose ball, following it back with pass, a fumble, an illegal forward pass, or an illegal kick. The team last in possession then gets to choose what they're going to do with that. Uh, they can put the ball in play where their possession was lost, or they can decide we're going to go ahead and replay the down. So if... Uh, if you were a team on offense and you lost the ball, uh, then the defensive team gets to pick uh, where they want to keep the ball. They're certainly not going to replay the down. Uh, so that's kind of a, a bummer there. Uh, but that that's what you do in the, for 4-2-3B. Now, while a ball is in player possession, so it's not loose, it's not in the air or anything like that, and then we have an inadvertent whistle, then the team that was in possession, they can choose. So they can accept the results of the play at that dead ball spot, <clears throat> or they can replay the down. You know, maybe they were behind the line of scrimmage and they were about to get tackled or something like that, and somebody blew the whistle before they should have, then the defense is going to be upset that uh, the offense was going to get a do-over on that. Uh, from an offensive perspective, maybe they thought they were about to get a, a touchdown and uh, somebody blows a whistle. Uh, the play is dead. Offense is going to be upset that maybe they had an opportunity to score and they didn't. So they're probably going to either take the ball where it was where when we blew the whistle Hopefully they at least got a first down or something like that. Or they're going to say, you know what, let's just do a do-over. So those are your situations there. Now, if there was a foul prior to that inadvertent whistle, 
uh, that could be your get out of jail card. Uh, and the penalty, if the penalty is then accepted, then the penalty takes precedence and we're going to administer that according to the basic spot. And that's rule 4-2-3B. And for the new officials, you're going to learn that uh, not only do you carry a flag, but you carry a bean bag as well. And uh, one of the things that we use that bean bag for is when we realize we have an inadvertent whistle, we're going to drop a bean bag at the spot where that ball is when the play is dead, because then we'll try to uh, sort through all this about whether we're going to be replaying the down or accepting results of the play there. Another time that we drop a bean bag is when we see a fumble occur. Uh, so that gets us into 4-2-3B, that uh, that's where we lost possession and we need to start to uh, determine what's going on there. So those are our inadvertent whistles. We want to avoid those. Uh, unfortunately, we, we do tend to have those sometime during our career, but uh, the key to all that is be patient, watch what's going on. Uh, more often than not, having a late whistle is not a bad thing. Uh, you know, we just need to make sure the the tone of the game, if there's uh, if it's a rivalry game and it starts getting heated and we're, we're having a difficult time with the players, uh, sometimes we wind up having those early whistles uh, just to make sure that uh, we avoid any kind of fights or conflicts, any anything unnecessary like that. Any comments? Any discussion? I didn't scare you too off, right? So, okay, our next session is going to be the 13th of June, again, 6 p.m. Central Time. Uh, I haven't decided on a topic yet. Uh, I'm going to see what happens during these scrimmages. Uh, we may get some good film out of those that we could use, uh, some good talk up points before the season starts. Uh, so we post these announcements on Facebook, on the Get It Right Enterprises chain uh, uh, page, and also the North Alabama Football Officials Association page. Uh, and again, you can see these videos at the Get It Right Enterprises YouTube channel. So, uh, yes, sir. I apologize. I thought you had said 7.30. And that's why no. me and Martin just joined you. Oh. Uh, we thought the meeting was at 7.30 Eastern time, our time zone. Oh. Uh, we would like to, I know we would like to join in your next meeting on the 13th. Yep. If you'll send me the link, I'll forward it to everybody else. Uh, yep. I apologize for missing the discussion, but I'm for, I wrote down 7.30 for some reason. I don't know. I thought that's what you said. Yep. Uh, yep, it was six. Uh, but but we did record it. Uh, uh, Is there any way you can email me the, the PowerPoint, the slides you used tonight? Uh, you know, what, what we'll do is uh, uh, when we record it, I, I give it to my daughter and she puts it on the, the, the YouTube channel and she'll probably have it on there by tomorrow afternoon. Okay. How do I find the YouTube channel? I uh, just, just look, up, get on it YouTube, right. look up, look up, get it right enterprises. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. And, and I'll, I'll put this on the calendar for next month. All right. Good to go. Yeah. Sorry for the confusion there. Confusion there. So, well, all right. That's so, all right. I had a long day anyways. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording then.